talk about an underutilized technique. Underutilized in the home, it's very valuable. It's used in professional kitchens all the time. Less so in the home. It's the water bath. Cooking something in water. Water is its own thermometer. It can't go above 212 degrees. And when it's uncovered, it actually cools the air around it as it's evaporating. Today we're going to make a seafood terrine. It's one of my favorite kitchen tools. Uh, this is a terrine mold. It's the gold standard. It's what you find in the best kitchens. Uh, my father gave me one because he knew I wanted one so much. It's a great vessel. We have our lined vessel. I've lined this with plastic wrap. In order to get it to stick to the sides, I've sprinkled the terrine mold with water and pressed the plastic wrap in. So let's get going on our mousseline. We're going to take some shrimp, some egg white and cream, and we're going to blend that together, and that's going to be our mousseline. Then we're going to fold that mousseline with a garnish of bay scallops, crab meat, leeks, and some chives for color and flavor. So first we add our shrimp. We're keeping it on ice because when we're making this, uh, what's called a force meat or a farcier uh, stuffing, it's very important to keep your ingredients very cold. We're going to add the egg white, which is going to serve as a binder. And then we're going to emulsify or blend in the fat, the saffron infused cream. And we get that going. Take this out. And slowly add the cream. And that is a mousseline. And we simply put the mousseline into a bowl. Now that it's emulsified and everything's very cold, it should be fairly stable, so you shouldn't have to worry about it too much. But still, it's a good idea to work quickly and keep all your garnish and everything cold. Then we add our garnish. Our leeks. Leeks are a very flavorful form of onion. I use them all the time. They add so much flavor. They're also underused. Some beautiful bay scallops. If you don't have access to bay scallops, get whole scallops and just quarter them so you have big chunks so that when you slice it, you'll see a big interior garnish of these scallops. And then we have some lovely crab meat. So basically, it's really about the crab meat and the scallops, and the shrimp are just holding it all together. So I'm simply going to mix this up with some chives, another onion, and we're just going to fold it all together till it's uniformly mixed. Add a little more salt to this, I think. There's some salt in the cream. So it's all mixed. I've got my terrine mold. And I'm just going to fill it up. I try and slap it down a little bit to get rid of any air pockets that might form. The mousseline basically just binds this beautiful garnish together. I'm going to press it down. So that it fills the terrine evenly. Get rid of any air pockets that might have formed. And then we're simply going to fold the plastic over it. This will make it very easy to remove from the terrine mold. Cover it. And I've got some hot water. It's been heating on the stove. And I'm going to put this in the oven until the interior of the terrine reaches 135 degrees. The tips I'd give a new cook just starting out are first, how to use salt. Salt's the most important ingredient in the kitchen. We're taught that it's bad for us. It's not bad for us if we cook our own food and season our food naturally. The second thing I'd say is learn five great techniques, perfect techniques. I don't, you know, you can, you can know how to do a thousand recipes. Know five good techniques and that makes you a great cook. So here is my finished terrine. I cooked it in the oven for about an hour till it reached 135 degrees. I removed it from the oven and set it down and let it cool. When I could handle it, I pulled it out and let it come to room temperature before I put it in the fridge. I did an extra step. 
um, which is optional, but I like to do it. We um, put a piece of cardboard on top, covered with foil, and put some tomato cans on top, or any kind of way you can use a box of salt or anything. It helps to make a more even texture throughout. It makes for a better presentation, but again, it's optional. I did it because I like to do it. So anyway, here is our finished terrine. And we're going to just loosen the edges. We're going to pull it up a little bit. It's cold. Looks gorgeous. There we go. Finished terrain is absolutely beautiful. I'm going to taste a little bit of it to make sure what I'm serving is good. Always taste your food before you serve it to your guests. Mm. This is a very clean seafoody flavor, very delicate texture, um, lovely garnish. This is a perfect seafood tree. So what I'm going to do to plate it is just simply cut two wedges. I'm going to serve it on some lemon shallot aioli because it goes so well with the seafood. Chervil, a great tarragani herb just for garnish. I'm going to serve it with a little mash and herb salad. That's how difficult these refined French classical dishes are, a beautiful seafood terrine. But you know what? The same method, the same vessel, works great for the American classic meatloaf. My mom's meatloaf is cooked in this vessel too. Same way, water bath, great texture to the meat. So there you have it, an elegant French classic, seafood terrine, meatloaf, mashed potatoes and gravy, both made possible, both perfected by this undervalued technique, the water bath. It's a great technique. I hope you'll try it. You are not gonna believe what Le Creuset is up to. It's called Pass It On Potluck. It could be coming to you. It's a crazy idea. All they want you to do is they want you to cook from it. They want you to cook a meal with family and friends, take pictures, share your story. When you've shared your story, they print out a label, you pop it on the box, and off it goes to the next doorstep. I love it. Go to lecrosay.com slash potluck. This could be coming to your doorstep.